Dev gets another interception. Shout out, shout out Gilly Lockdown. Yeah, you, you, said it, you said it before. I, see, this is what I'm all about. I tell these corners all the time, man. I'm going to try to get you extra calls. I'm going to try to get you help. I'm going to make the right decisions at safety. All I ask, four or five times a year, tip a ball in the air, my direction. I'll catch it. Welcome back. Episode number, where are we at? Three. three. We're at three. three. It's Episode a long number season. Three, season two, double coverage with the McCordy Twins. I am your host, Jason McCourty, with my sidekick, NFL leading in interceptions, tied with like 15 people, but <laughs> we'll get back to that. I uh, want to first say thank you to our sponsors here at Double Coverage, uh, Boston Medical Center and Brace Kids. We've partnered together to tackle sickle cell, but I had to switch it up on you. You can find us on YouTube and iTunes. Mama, we made it! All you have to do is search Double Coverage with the McCourty Twins. Also, you can find us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at McCourty Twins. We're all over the place. As Mayo, as Mayo used to say when I was on Quicksands with him, you know, we got that Instagram. Search, seek us, and you will find us. We are there. Let's get right Ooh, in. Oh, that's new, huh? Yeah, I just, I just thought of you that. You thought too. of that? Yeah, okay. Uh, off the muscle, as we used to say in the uh, locker room. Okay, that sounds like one of my speeches before the game. I just kind of think of that stuff. I think a little beforehand, but it comes like and it just goes, you know. Before we get into the game, it's Tuesday right now, and Tuesdays in the NFL usually are about community, about giving back. We it's an off day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We kind of started that out Monday night, James White's bowling event. Uh, Sweet feet for strikes. Sweet feet for strikes. Yep. There we go. He also partners with Boston Medical. Exactly, exactly. I uh, was over at King's Bowling Alley in Denham. Uh, we had a great time. A lot of people showed up, a lot of teammates. Who was, uh, uh, who was a highlight teammate that showed up? Highlight teammate? I would have to say the GOAT, Tom Brady. <laughs> Strolled around for about five to ten minutes. He couldn't stay long because the whole time he was there, Tom, Tom, Tom. It was Tom. like wolves moving in a saw, pack. All you saw was like the flash from people's phones, just like following them around. Like it was insane, but it was cool to see Tom there. Uh, he wouldn't engage in any pizza or uh, chicken wings. Yeah, we with tried us. it. We tried to get him to eat some of our um, very to us healthy food. The reason we're in the NFL is you eat that kind of stuff. Um, but Tom just wasn't for There was it. no avocados on yeah, the pizza. Yeah, I, I think that's the difference of playing at 32 and 42. Yeah, I won't know. But. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah, definitely a great event. He didn't event. even try any of our ginger ale. Yeah, I don't think he wanted any of that. I mean, it's pretty tasty. Yeah, exactly. But coming up, we got Duran Harmon's karaoke night. I'm telling you, this is going to be a treat. You know, Duran's doing a karaoke night for autism um, at the Grand in Boston. It'll be September 24th. Uh, that evening, you'll have guys in there singing. He has an also MC, also from Rutgers, Gia Peppers. You can see her on your TV. Check out BET, all of that. She's always on the TV or a channel somewhere. So if you have time to grill, go to the Grand. Uh, what's the website again? Uh, all you have to do um, is go online uh, right now. And you said the date wrong. It is actually Sep September 30th, 30th, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Um, yeah, yeah, it's okay. HarmonKaraokeNight.com. Go on there, purchase tickets. Bunch of teammates. Dev has promised at least to do five songs. He's he's all geared up for this. He said the last time you said Chung used to do a karaoke. Yeah, night, I used to crush it. And used to crush. We're gonna it, try so. to get some of the old school R and B groups up there. Get a couple guys up there with me. I'm trying to convince my wife um, to do uh, a, a little uh, duet with me, and, and and you know maybe a little Jay Z Beyonce. Let me handle that. I give her a little tequila. She'll be up there. How's that sound? Don't drink and drive. Well, yeah, we don't say that. We're gonna let's Uber. get let's get right into. No, we're gonna lift. Let's heat it up. Oh, this let's guy get, got all the things. Let's in there. get I, these transitions come like off yeah, the top of my okay. head. Like, let's heat it up. Let's get right into the game. If you're talking about heat, you must be talking about Sunday. Yes, Miami. It was blazing, man. Sh before we get into that, it was so hot. We want to shout out a lot of the people in our organization. Oh yes, that were. If you guys watched the game, you saw we had these like tents held up on the sideline to kind of give us a little bit of shade. And, I mean, I, I felt bad, like, for the guys that were holding those up. But it just helped so much. It did. It was so hot out there, so sunny. So, shout out to the organization. Great idea to come up with. All the guys in the equipment room. Yeah. Uh, Richie that does everything. Operations. Chris. It was, it was, it was a, a team guys, effort. So. And as you say, as we always say in New England, the more you can do. We don't have a shade staff. So, everybody from all different parts of the organization all helped out 
Uh, so that was awesome. The guys we really will be, appreciate it. We will it. be coming up with ways to say thank you to Yeah, we got guys. to. We got to. Uh, but like I started to show off, man, Dev gets another interception. Shout out, shout out Gilly Lockdown. Yeah, you, said it, you said it before. I, I, see, this is what I'm all about. I tell these corners all the time, man. I'm going to try to get you extra calls. I'm going to try to get you help. I'm going to make the right decisions at safety. All I ask, four or five times a year, tip a ball in the air, my direction. I'll catch it. We all have a great I was kind of upset because, like, if anybody, if you go back and watch that play, you see at the last moment there's a flash, and it's yeah. me getting out of your way. And I happen to be able to jam my guy up and get my eyes back to the quarterback. I see the ball throw. Boom, I break. Ball gets tipped. I'm like, here goes an easy one. And then you show up out of nowhere, and you kind of took my pick. And then if you fast forward to towards the end of the game, you kind of could have let me have that one because Josh Rosen threw you another one, a gift, and you kind of like fell on your head yeah, and you my, didn't catch the ball. My face is all swollen. But you got big love from Bill in the meeting room. So you. But no one else got to see that. I don't like that. You know what I mean? But you got to take that home with you. That's way deeper than any interception. Has that been the first shutout that you've been a part of? In New England? Yeah. Nah. Um, in 2016, I think we shut somebody out. Yeah. It was a low scoring game, though, but it was a shutout. I can't think of another. I mean, the last. I've been a part of a shutout with New England before, too. That was my rookie year in Tennessee. And but I was on the other end of it where we didn't score a point and they scored, they scored 59. So we got shut out in, I think we got shut out 16 2 at home against Buffalo. That's when we had Jacoby got his second start, mm. messed up thumb. He couldn't throw the ball. Dude was a warrior out there, though. Well, he won, he won, this, he won this weekend. But um, defense. Pitches a shutout, but not only pitches a shutout, comes up with four interceptions, two return by touchdown, two return for touchdown, and then what was it? I think seven sacks came up with. Yeah, them dudes up front was eating, as they say. Man, big, big. It was a great effort, and I think the coolest thing about that whole defensive effort was, like you just said, playing down in Miami. It was hot. Nobody played every defensive snap. We had guys just rolling in and out. I think we showed a lot of depth. Um, and I love games like that because everybody uh, on our team works so hard. Everybody but obviously in. everybody can't play every yeah. game and every snap. Um, but to go out there and know we had to lean on each other uh, was awesome to me. Man, Jamie Collins. For me, it's so cool. Um, obviously, I came here last year. The year before that, I got a chance to play with Jamie in Cleveland. And then now, fast forward to 2018 season, now 2019 able to play alongside Jamie again for you guys. You got to see him start his career out, made a lot of plays, went to Cleveland. I got to be with him in Cleveland. We talked a lot about what was going on there, about where he was been, had came from, where I had came from. So now to be on the same team and watch him Sunday um, to intercept two passes, a half sack, five tackles. Two gimmies, too. Two, two touchdowns. I mean, yeah, but he snagged that thing out the air with one hand. Buddy, buddy's hand, just remember? Saying to him, buddy's just hand. Talking, what size gloves? Friday when I practice, I'm just like, like, what size glove do you wear? The guy has like a 4X hand. The one thing you would say about him, he's not human. But Dude's not human. Jogs into the end zone. What about the celebration? He takes the place of the official. Pretty elite. Up. Pretty elite. Pretty slow to get there, but the celebration was really The second elite. one was, I mean, to catch the pick. And run home. home. And run, run home. home. Ran right in the locker room. But that goes back to it was so hot. He's trying to get to that AC. He knew the, the locker room. And it was cool to remind you of that kid that nobody would pick on the basketball team when you were playing out the, outside in the park, and nobody would pick him, but it'd be his basketball you were playing with. <laughs> Grab his ball and run home. Make That's what Jamie did. Home with it. And it was cool because our film, our, our actual study film, got every second our of him video, walk, yeah, running Teddy all the way back. Yeah. So shout For out sure. the video guys, Teddy, sure. Jarrett, Jimmy D. That's awesome, man. Um, AB scores his first touchdown as a Patriot. Do you think that quiet the people, or are we going to just get more A-B questions? I don't know, but, like, you just don't even want to do media because I'm just like, stop asking everybody else in the locker room. Ask him. He'll answer his questions at some point. Stop asking us. We don't got the answers. The touchdown was pretty nice, though. Pretty nice. Pretty good coverage. Back shoulder, great throw. Good ball, good catch. But that's what you. That's two, two elite players elite. in the NFL who haven't spent much time together. And to be able to connect on a pass like that, really good defense on the play. Uh, the defender just misses the ball, wilts, and A.B. scores a touchdown, knocks somebody over as he's jumping in the stands to celebrate. Oh, it got real. I mean, his love in Miami was awesome just to see the atmosphere, how many people came out there to root for him. So I thought that was good. You know, a lot went on, and you get your first game with a team, but you kind of feel like you're at home. So I'm sure he really enjoyed that moment. And 
pregame was pretty cool too, being down there on the sideline. We're warming up. Charles Woodson. Charles Woodson, Chad Johnson. You got all the great. Is he Ocho Cinco or Johnson? Some know him as Ocho Cinco. Okay. Um, but it was pretty cool just to see those guys and quick talk, you know, play with Chad and then always looked up to Charles Woodson. Obviously, I'm a corner move to safety, so how could I not? You know, for sure. really look at this guy's game. I studied him when I first moved to, uh, to safety, studied him in Oakland, looked at some of his old film in Green Bay. So it was it was an honor to get to talk to him before the game. What was it like for you? A lot of old Patriots down there uh, in Miami. You got uh, Flo, uh, DB coach and Boyer, uh, Chad, uh, Chad O'Shea is the offensive coordinator, Jerry, quarterbacks coach, a ton of guys down there, even some players and Eric Rowe, Jamal Wilts. What's it like when you go into a Sunday and there's so many guys on the opposing sideline that you know and you recognize guys that you have a lot of love for? I mean, a guy like Flo helped shape your career of what you've become in the league. What's that like, uh, game? It was, it was different. I think it happens so much in the NFL that you get used to it. Um, but I think it was different in this sense of, like, there was a lot of guys there that I had been with my whole career. Mm -hmm. Like you mentioned, Josh Boyer, I came in and played for – uh, when I was a rookie playing corner. Secondary coach. Then I moved to safety, which was a tough time for me, moving to safety after not playing great in 2011 at corner. Um, and just being able to lean on Flo and his wife and his kids. I've had Thanksgiving at his house. Uh, so Sunday was really awkward for me because um, it wasn't something you wanted. You didn't want it. A little bittersweet. You wanted it to, be, you know what I mean, just be a good game and you want to win. Um, but, you know, I think Flo's an awesome person. I think he's an incredible leader. So, um, I think the future is bright for those guys. You know, obviously there's some growing pains that come with it. Um, but I even spoke about it after the game, how much uh, respect and love I have for him um, and, and what he's about as a person. So uh, I'm excited to see what they do down in Miami. Um, hopefully they just finish second in the division every year. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a very, hey. very good way to put it. Um, defense hasn't allowed a touchdown. Don't, uh, you can't say this. You jinx us. Take that out. Oh, I like it. I like the second note that you put in there. What? I like the other note. Fancy football. I hate fantasy. We football. had high scoring, but I, you, you can see I skipped down, and I wanted to add. I lost my first game in fantasy football. That's good. I hate fantasy football. So uh, I'm gonna have, but I'm gonna have a talk with JG today. I started JG, and he only gave me three points. So oh yeah, I mean yeah. me, me and the Joshes, Josh McDaniels and Josh Gordon. We're gonna sit down, and figure out uh, how we need to go about this each week. Um, what I need to do to to know uh, who to play. I had Galladay, Galladay on the bench, and I'm a I'm a big Galladay fan too. But I sat him, and I went with JG because that's just what I do. You know, it didn't work out for me this week. Lost by I think 12. Um, Your future's not in fantasy. Yeah, I mean, my, the guy I went against had Le'Veon Bell. Did you watch him last night? The dude was doing everything, running, catching. Played his heart out. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. Gonna be a tough, gonna be a tough challenge for us this week. It's gonna be a real tough challenge. We've seen him so many times in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. He lines up at receiver. Um, he lines up at, I mean, we honest, he lines up at the X receiver. He lines up at the Z the in the slot. Um, at running back, obviously, in two back situations. One, he's just all over the place. So he's a very challenging guy, and that's not to mention you got one of the fastest guys on the edge with Robbie Anderson. Jamison Crowder looks like he has a catch on every third down, so um, our hands will be full. and They'll be a little unknown, obviously, uh, with their quarterback situation, yep. so we'll have to prepare um, for whoever it can be. But And that poses a challenge in itself, you know, because sometimes people will look and be like, oh, wow, they so have and a so, chance yeah. to go on a third-string quarterback. But also for a defense, as you're planning, you're getting ready, and you really don't know who you're getting ready for at the time because you're sitting there and you're just like, man, I don't know much about this guy. You're trying to dig up as much film as possible. So it's kind of a challenge. Trust me, I know. Yeah. Backup quarterbacks. When in Philly, no Carson Wentz. Yeah. I mean, obviously Nick Foles wasn't your average backup quarterback, but the guy played at a high level. Anybody could beat you on any day. So um, we know we'll have our hands full. Division game, they hate us. We hate them. We'll all go at it. And, there you go. Uh, it'll be a fun one. One, one, something that's going on in the NFL that um, is very interesting to me is the, the demands for trades. I mean, we just saw Minka Fitzpatrick get traded uh, a few days after throughout the course of last week. Everybody continued to say, oh, he's not happy. He wants out of there. He's, he's requested a trade. Um, today, between yesterday and today, we're hearing that Jalen Ramsey isn't happy in Jacksonville. He wants out. And as I look at it, it's kind of becoming a little bit of NBA-ish. 
Kawhi Leonard didn't want to be in San Antonio. Paul George didn't want to be uh, with the Pacers. Hey, I want out. They get them out of there, and they're on new teams, and they're developing and all of that. And you, in the past, you haven't seen that with NFL players at all. Guys have been in positions where you sign a big contract when everything works out is perfect. As when soon it as, doesn't, it doesn't. You know, you're either holding out and you and the team are at odds or you're not performing up to the contract that you already earned and they signed you to and you're forced to take a pay cut or you're, for, or you're, you're asked to uh, – or you're being released. So now how do you feel about that? Guys are actually seeking – to be traded and they're being granted their request. I think it's pros and cons. I know we were talking to a friend earlier and he talked about just, you know, for kids when they look at that and um, now they want to jump schools or they want to do different things. Um, but I also think that there's a history of the game. There were there were men who were stuck on teams with no free agency, no anything, and they were just locked in No there. way to heighten their earnings. No way, no way, you know, and I think those guys, they, they put on a strike. They've done different they things. Fought. They've battled for the guys of today, and I think you always want to push the, uh, the envelope. Um, and you always want to keep the team aspect of it, but I, I'm never going to be against guys trying to get to their free will and do what they want. Uh, obviously, if I was a fan in a city and I was rooting for a guy in that team, no, I don't want to see a guy. Like, if I'm a Dolphin fan, I don't want to see our, our – you know, our first round pick in year two after he yeah. played a great – like, I wouldn't want to see that. If I'm the Jags, I don't want to see Jalen Ramsey leave. He's one of the best corners in the For league. Sure. Um, so you wouldn't want to see that. But as a player – um, and as an advocate of players, I'm, I'm all for it. You know, Jalen Ramsey is probably a guy who wants a new contract. He wants to get paid. I just saw a stat. I think three of the four guys drafted in front of him have now gotten new deals. He's sitting there like, where's my deal? Each, each game we play without a new deal or a second contract, when you're that good, is a risk of getting hurt. So um, I'm excited to see how the NFL goes. The players are realizing we have some power in this game. Um, we're just starting right, to utilize right around the time as the CBA is going to be negotiated in. It, you got to be in a position of power to be able to negotiate and really make it's change about and get the things you want. Exactly. And I'm excited to see what a guy like Minkah Fitzpatrick does in Pittsburgh, a guy that, like you said, was the 11th pick in the draft. A guy Super that, talented. From exactly. Jersey. From you know, Jersey. So You know he's um, a baller. Obviously, things weren't working the way he wanted in Miami, and maybe the staff felt the same. Who knows? Welcome to We're not Miami. involved in that. But uh, a guy gets a chance to go to Pittsburgh, and who knows? He may flourish. You know what I mean? And no more beaches, though. Yeah, it's gonna get a little cold. It's gonna get a little cold out there. Yeah. Like I said, though, he's from Jersey. He's probably tough. Tough for sure. And a a guy like Ramsey is so like we watched it last year. Khalil Mack is traded from Oakland to Chicago. The impact he has on the game, no matter where he's at, and Ramsey and the has, amount of the amount of picks and stuff yeah. that went in that trade too. Jalen Ramsey has that type of. Impact. Yes, like he's that good of a cornerback and has proven that throughout his young career. So it's tough to see him leave. But when you watch what transpired on the sideline between him and Doug Marone, which transpired kind of throughout the past two off seasons and had not coming to things, he, my guy showed up with the Brinks truck, like taped the twenty dollar bill to his back plate. Like a lot. I guess there's been things that have transpired that it may be, hey, team player, hey, it may be just best for us to go. Our separate ways so I, I mean think, but I, I do think things can always be fixed we're in a work environment like none of these things should be super personal because we're in a work environment everyone's trying to do what's best for the team themselves like it's a whole mesh of when things it's, when it's all working and moving in that direction when it's one common goal and everybody's going to yeah I guess goal. that's true but it's not always I've been a part of some situations and teams I've been on in environments where it hasn't always been like that and it's been survival of the fittest for parts of the season or parts of uh, of my career so you you kind of understand that and for teams you're building you have a, a a certain way that you think things are going and as a player you're trying to build for yourself and your team as well and you have a, a vision of where you want to see so things and, and these trades do you think it's a win-win like when Oakland traded Khalil Mack and got a bunch of picks did Oakland get a win out of that obviously Chicago got Khalil Mack I feel like when you see trades like that like for the team it falls under the category of like TBD, to be determined. We got to wait and see how some of these draft picks pan out. What's the draft pick the following year and all of that type stuff? Do these guys stay healthy? Are, the, are they as talented as they look like coming out? Because when you let a guy like Khalil Mack go and then you go watch what he did last year in Chicago, you just like, ah, 
like Chicago looks like they want to trade, but you kind of got to wait and see. see. You got to wait and see what happens in Miami over the next uh, several years with the draft picks that they're stockpiling. We saw what transpired in Cleveland this offseason or the last two offseasons, Jarvis Landry, Odell Beckham, and a guy like Chubb, a guy like Miles Garrett, you know. They're Still got Kareem Hunt coming You know back. what I mean? They're continuing Still. to make moves. Bigger, maybe, yeah. And, and, very build, true. and build for the future. So that's the tough thing. And um, I've been a part of teams when you talk about, like, how does, how, like, guys are requesting trades. You don't just walk in the team meeting room and say, hey, coach, I want out. But Well, you know firsthand how the trades work. You've been traded before. Yeah, I mean, for a player, I mean, I didn't request my trade. Uh, I wasn't mad at it, you know, just want to put that out there. But at the same time, um, mine was a little bit different because you think you're getting released and you're traded because somebody wants you, which is a great feeling. Like, man, somebody wants me. I'm like, open arms. Hey, yeah, thanks. Welcome. Yeah, and all that. But I think I've been a part of teams where I've heard guys like, nah, man, my agent's calling up here every week. I'm trying to get out of here. They're trying to trade me. But the truth of the matter is I say this to guys all the time. Everybody not worth being traded. Like, some guys sit there and say, hey, I want to be traded. 31 other teams are like, nah, we don't want him. We don't want his contract. We don't want his attitude. We don't want his production. They might claim him, though. Yeah, maybe. You never know. Or pick him up on a new year. On a new deal. So Everybody like, don't have trade value. But when you have guys like a Minka Fitzpatrick, who is coming off being the number 11 pick of the draft, a guy like Jalen Ramsey, who's an all-pro, a pro bowler, a shutdown corner, when you have guys like that being talked about. They got that trade value. There's teams that want. Like when Antonio Brown in the offseason, when he was in so Pittsburgh, you, he wanted to be traded. So you think those teams just call around to all the teams like, hey, man. They don't have what's to. What's up, strength? What's up? In today's day and age with social media, media Sunday as soon as it happened we see all the agent has to do is call DM Schefter DM Ian Rappaport hey so-and-so wants to be traded or you could DM or you could just DM the McCourty twins and we'll break it right here on double coverage I mean do what do whatever Breaking makes you news. happy I'm just saying you know and that's all it takes and once that once that is in the air teams are gonna they're gonna be interested there's teams that feel like hey we're this player away that player away and you make those trades and you you try to see what you can do I mean, so speaking of change a lot of change right now yeah. we got Ben hurt big Ben's hurt in Pittsburgh we got Drew Drew Brees is hurt in New Orleans Daniel uh, Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones is going to start this week for the Giants. Eli Manning. Sam Darnold's out. Sam Darnold, like and, you and just now Trevor Simeon. You out. just look. Uh, I mean, across the board, so much happens in the NFL so fast um, that when guys actually be traded, they want new environments. You got to kind of respect it. Um, but I think it's so interesting. You look at these three quarterbacks that have just been, I mean, elite for years: yeah, Ben, Drew, Drew, Eli. Yeah. Um, all Super Bowl think, champs. To just think of a, a, a week in the NFL where they're all still active, but they'll all be out for injury or whatever reason. Um, end of eras. Like, Did what you do see you? that stat? Eli Manning has started 232 of 233 regular season games. And it's, that is insane. Like, the man hasn't been like longevity, he shows up dependability, every Sunday. durability, everything. Man, uh, tough to see Big Ben get hurt on a play where there's no contact out for the year. But I didn't know. I did see uh, Mike Tomlin said that they they're not. They think it's a possibility he can oh, come so back. He, okay. I mean, okay. the guy. I mean, what hasn't he played? Yeah, so we he, wouldn't be surprised. The guy plays tough, with everything. Tough, so. tough dude that you love to compete against. Drew Brees hurts his thumb, and Teddy it's, Bridgewater, Teddy it's Bridgewater. It's interesting in all three situations. Eli, you got Daniel Jones looked amazing in the preseason. Teddy Bridgewater. People have been talking about him. Miami tried to get him as a starter this year. Mm -hmm. And then in, in Pittsburgh, you have Mason, Mason Rudolph, Rudolph, who looked amazing in the preseason, yeah. too. These young gunners are ready Did to well go. When he came in They're Seattle ready to go. Seattle so well. it'll be exciting. You know, um, it's he, another one of those situations. Oh, we're playing the backup. You better be ready for better that backup. Be ready. Eli Manning, Hall of Fame. De no doubt about it. And I hate it because I'm a part of one of the reasons why he's in the Hall of Fame. So I pose this question to you. I saw this on Twitter. Shout out Tom Curran. He said, when a, if a guy like Eli Manning, a first ballot possibly, say he's a first ballot, just hypothetically, say he's a first ballot Hall of Famer, does that give a guy like Julian Edelman a chance of when it's his time of, hey, we're, Eli was a 500 quarterback for his career in the regular season, and a guy that when he hit the playoffs, he turned up. I think, I think so. MVP. A guy like Jules who probably regular season numbers are, are really good, but probably when you compare them to other Hall of Fame yeah. receivers, regular season would be a little bit different. But playoff-wise. But I think, I, I think you can't take out the human element of, your, of the impact that you're watching. So I think Julian will have a case because of the impact that mm -hmm. when you watch. 
But I, I think when you say Eli Manning, the guy gets the ball in his hands quarterbacks, every snap. Quarterbacks. And then when you look, you'll say that was a really good – everybody says those Giants teams are really good defensively. They had yeah. this guy that – and then you look, Eli Manning has won with a different crop of receivers – when it was, you know, Plaxico Burris and David Tyree and those guys, then Victor Cruz, Mario, Mario Manningham, uh, Knicks, those guys. So, like, you have different waves of Victor guys Cruz. that have come up, but he was a constant in that. So I think that that is a little different uh, when speaking about Jules, a receiver. Um, but I'm pro. You know, I think even with Grunt, people will say that, you know, his stats might not, his years is – you're but pro Patriots when you turn, but I'm just saying when you watch the game of Gronk, it, it's there, you know. So Dominant. I mean, but everybody's gonna have an opinion. Yeah. I mean, speaking of opinions, I think we're about to welcome probably one of the most opinionated people I've ever met in my life that um, you were crazy enough to marry. Yeah. Nah. We get to welcome. Come the, on in. Come on the in. The beautiful Michelle McCordy. Hey, we're gonna let you sit right here. We let all our guests sit in the country. Right in the middle. Oh, thank yeah, you. we don't. And Jay never takes this seat. I always take the hard seat. I'm the host of the show. Get you right with your mic. You yeah, got, you, you got a mic. Oh, you can't, yeah. can't just. It's my she, first time. She's a little nervous. She's never done this I'm before. I'm not nervous. Huh? That's that's what I'm she a said. Tired today. There we go. All all, all, all moms are tired. So. Oh, she got her hat low. Look at her. This okay. Is, this is J Max hat. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> so this is Dev's wife, Michelle. Uh, we're welcoming her to the show. We should get mad. It's Doctor Michelle. She's oh, there doctor. we go. We all went to Rutgers together, and yeah. she was able to swoop Dev off his feet. Some of us graduated with higher uh, grade point average than others. Yeah, uh, she's a uh, just to say I'm second. We all can't play football, you know. Yeah, med school students, so a little but bit we're different. Not all athletes, a little bit so. different than us, so you know. It's okay. God gave us different gifts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that we have her in here, we won't bore her with too much too much sports. You know, she doesn't know much about football anyway, so. Um, we'll move on to what we like to consider the group chat part of the show. Uh, we figured today we got you on here. We'll talk TV shows. Some of the right. top TV shows we've been watching, you know, J Max. Right. Always, some of these shows are a little late because J Max always late well, see, to shows. I have three children. Like, there's no possible way I can come home and watch three episodes. My we six have two year- kids. Three. All right, y'all, yeah, but one they're more. both young though. Like, and Brayden, one of your kids Bra- super independent. Yeah, but Brayden's one years old. Like, whatever's on the TV, he's just bebopping around. We like, won't we'll watch it with him. Yeah, we don't watch it with the kids. Well, I mean, and if you guys side note, if you if you happen to hear me call her Yee, her nickname's Yee, so oh, yeah. uh, we don't really call her Michelle. You but, gave me that nickname before we even started dating. It's still stuck, right? Oh, she's trying to get sentimental. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just good at that kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> but you gave, you gave a lot of girls nicknames. Um, maybe mm. you never know. I'm, I'm talented, man. I, mm. What? Don't answer the question. <laughs> I'm just I'm just good at Please thinking. Please I Please think fifth. I think well on my feet. Okay. I started a show. I guess it's old. I don't know, but my my hunters, my, my hunters. readers. My, My Hunters Hunter. on Netflix. Wow. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah, I caught her. I taught her about the show too. I'm almost done. So I'm 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 intrigued. I mean, it's a if little, you're, if you're it's a, a little person, creepy though. If you're a person yeah. that don't mind watching like some like graphic Gory. and based on true yeah. events. Gory though. Yeah, it's yeah. based on true events. Yeah. It's, no, that's the real thing. Like, so we'll just give you a little side. If you got Netflix or you got a friend that got a Netflix account. <laughs> Jump on Netflix, Mind Hunter is about the FBI, how they came Netflix up with the not gonna, They're not going to put our podcast on Netflix. If what you just ruined it. If somebody has a family account, in. you're allowed up to four users. There you go. Keep Dang, it going. I got that. All right, cool. Jump on. You see how they came up with uh, serial killers. Um, and you kind of, they go through and they interview some of these guys. It, it's pretty intense. Studying man. serial killers. Yeah, it, it, it's pretty intense. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you, you guys are avid um, reality TV show watchers. I am. He's not so much anymore. Yeah. Lo- the love and hip hops of the world, the uh, housewives of the world. I stop having enough she time watched, to she, watch that stuff. She watches every housewife. No, though. it's when you are like doing dishes and you don't have to pay attention. You what just else got she it watch? in the background. And, uh, basketball. I don't wise. have drama in my life, so I like to watch basketball it. Basketball. She watches it all. I'm giving like six thumbs down to any reality TV. I I'm, know. I'm not, it's terrible, I'm not. but. But I mean, in between the reality and the mind, <laughs> the mind hunters and stuff. Um, do you get a chance weekly to check out um, double coverage with the McCordy twins? Are you an avid podcast listener to of when the McCordy twins? When I have time, twins? yes. I so do. we've done, <laughs> let's say on estimate, let's say this is our 15th show. That's a good, that's a roundabout number. How many have you watched in full? And in we full? on this show, we 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 pride ourselves on honesty here. So let's. 
Um, I think I'm up to like six now. You watched six episodes, yeah. so not even half. Okay, less than a little less than half. It's okay. I'm gonna catch up. I'm gonna binge watch it. All our all our viewers when life slows find down. you someone that believes in you <laughs> and supports you. I was strong in the beginning, and then it's just a lot. of How many of the home happened. football games do you go to? All of them. Also, oh, she's more into the social event thing. That's she, not a social she event. She wants to be I'm active. outside watching. I don't even go inside. Do you have all a beverage the... at the uh, events? Not even, because I'm too focused. So you out there in the cold in the winter time? Cold, everything, boots, nothing. I stopped wearing heels. If <laughs> she was real, if she was real, she'd go out there in a short sleeve shirt in the winter. No, that's just. That's how we be out that's there. That's just nah, stupid. You have long it's okay. On. I'm not trying to catch a cold. Thank hey, you. Hey, side note: How did you feel? You know. I mentioned it. She's a doctor, went to med school, all of that, all of that stuff. How'd you feel to see, you know, me and Jay become honorary doctorates? Oh, it's, it's cute. It's right there. Whoa, oh, cute. That's, I mean. Oh, is this it? Yeah, don't yeah. touch. Don't touch. Don't touch. Don't touch. Don't touch. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. We didn't put mine up. Yeah, you're just not your show. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did you say it was cute? It was. It was really nice. It was a good, you guys made me so proud. I know we helped them, by the way. Melissa oh. and I, Jason's wife. Help oh. them a little bit, you know. Whatever we had do, some coaching. If you're gonna write a speech, do not hire them to. <laughs> what? Don't give you confidence. That mm -mm. speech came out they don't, amazing. They don't, leave you, they don't give you a bunch of confidence. They didn't build our. If we no. didn't have each other but, to lean but, on, but they gave you truth. Constructive but, criticism that you guys don't like. I would say, arguably, but if not, go right? Ahead. If not to come from us, who else would give? For it sure, to? Okay. for sure. I would say, arguably, one of the best coaches in sports ever. <laughs> Is not really a build you up type guy and, and Mr. Belichick. See? So maybe they've just maybe felt on the same. Maybe maybe tough they've love. learned learned from the greatest. So who knows? Mm -hmm. You know, like, I don't think they've learned from him. That's not that's not in their cup. They might have learned already, from us. It, so I respect it. was already it. in us. Oh, you were born it. with greatness. Yeah, that's why you guys had a great speech. You're Only welcome. because of you. You're welcome. Oh Maui, <laughs> we actually play with a demigod. That's what we watch most of the time is cartoons. That's what she watches. That's what I, I watch, yeah. Disney movies. The kids know when daddy comes in, we're going to watch whatever sport. Not me. I'm on. watching kids stuff all the time. Jay don't watch college football on Saturdays because he lets his kids run his house. Yeah, I mean, that's I've just, okay. I, I, that's it's enough it football. Like, I don't yeah, want to I, 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 I watch so, Rutgers from time to time. But if you had a choice and you would turn on the TV, what would what is the first thing you would watch? Let's say it's a TV show. Let's say it hasn't ended. What favorite show, movie, well, let's go favorite show or movie that you would love to watch old at or, any time. Old or new. You can at watch any it at time, any time. Friends, because it's always on at night, and we always put it on before bed. And favorite, what movie? Favorite character in Friends? Ooh. Joey, I guess? That lets you know a lot about her. How you she doing? Picked, <laughs> she, picked, she picked Joey. What's wrong with that? The stupidest guy on the show. <laughs> but if the I'm ladies' man. If I'm lacking it in my own life. But the ladies' man. Yeah. How about movie? Because that speaks a lot. I guess that makes me look bad. Favorite movie? I don't know. You don't have a favorite? Everybody has a favorite movie. I just don't think about it. You have to give me a second. Come back to me. Well, Which, we don't need to Hitch? go to anybody else. Yours Hitch? Yeah, I mean, Hitch is definitely up there. Shawshank Redemption? Shaw that's an elite. She's probably never watched it. I watched, like, most of it. Oh, I actually, goodness. I actually didn't get, sorry. She doesn't know. know. Life? I to finish it. Great Life movie. is not a favorite, though. She don't really know What movies. is a favorite? I've tried know. to, I've, I've introduced her to some good It's going to be probably, like, some kind of dramatic. Okay, movie. we'll move on then. Okay, fine. We got a section. You're our guest. We usually do a game, but to you, we'll do what the people want to know. Okay. How did you lock Devin down? <laughs> Seems like a very hard task. How 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 come I, I didn't get these questions beforehand? Yeah, I, I'll, I'll, make it, I'll, make it, I'll make it a little <laughs> easier. Like that's just too too broad of a okay, question. Jump in then. How did you guys first meet? One and then second, okay. how did you guys end up? Because you met. Way before. Let her tell us. Okay. Relax. Okay. You, okay. We okay. met uh, summer after my freshman year, your sophomore year. It's your story. Don't because, look at me. Because, <laughs> I mean, just correct me if I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Uh, my best friend was dating your teammate, and it was the summer. We want the quick version, too. Okay, fine. It was the summer, blah, blah, blah. Y'all were there, and I happened to come by with her, and... Yeah, and I saw you guys, and you were all jokesters. I didn't really see Jay. He was, like, hiding upstairs somewhere, right? I didn't really talk to you until, I don't know, years later. He was You didn't find her that interesting. He I, was don't remember, he I don't was remember that. Up. No, I, I don't even think I saw him. Got me booed up, booed up. Yeah, he was booed up early. Oh, that's a little for a karaoke night. And then Dev was just, you know, 
always in the background somewhere. Oh, I had a, bo- I had a boyfriend at the time, so I was taken. But so, so, how, so when was so chasing you? when did you guys? Yeah, uh, honestly, yeah. When did you guys start dating? We started dating my first year of med school. After his rookie year, he came back. Oh, so one would say train. she waited to date me after I got drafted. After you were already chasing played me. Played well yes. as a rookie. Okay. And then she said. After you. After, after I already got into med school. After I was established. Oh, how well they paying in med school nowadays. Whose <laughs> who's place did you use? To, who, who used to feed you? She, yes, exactly. She, so We started to really date because she started <laughs> inviting me over because she cooked. What man Not turned down? I cooked, I what said, man turns down free you, dinner? Because you, because he Whatever. looked hungry. Yes. I ain't. Nah, I didn't he look hungry. He was around. I said, don't I let extra, Jay put things in. I have don't put things in your head. Extra food if you want some. So she did. And then he wouldn't go away. What would you say is Dev's best and worst quality? Um, we'll hmm. do. We'll do best first. No, best? we should do worst first. You best. Choose. He's good at um, uplifting people. I would say. Mm, good motivator. If yeah. If you're if you're down, he I don't know. He pulls it out. Pulls out some biblical verses. He'll pull out some some real. It's like the defensive speeches that you give, right? For mm. the DBs. It's mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. But in real life. And his uh, worst quality. Maybe worst? I didn't have one. She like she was done. <laughs> you know, not worse. Worse. Um, I mean, try to narrow it down. He's and pick a more. Leo. Both of y'all. So all the negative things about Leo. Can't get nothing past the doctor. We're both Leo. I'm just saying. No, I'm trying to say. <laughs> if you guys didn't know, that I'm sure your wife share would birth, agree. Share a birthday. I'm sure your wife would agree that 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 could be negative at times. As far as we are, as far very as intelligent leaders. Uh, leaders can go a negative way sometimes. So what then, is his worst quality? That he's yeah, a Leo. I mean, let's get it. Let's out. say all the negative things about Leos. I don't, I don't Not everybody's know. into yeah, astrology. Okay. Let's um, just get two or three. So of them. Leo is like king of the jungle, right? So they want to be dominant. Sounds all like the you. Time. Sounds so, like being Simba. I would love to be so, Simba. Well, it'd be Mufasa, but mm-hmm. um, well, he dies. I don't want to be the guy that dies. But he was the king, yeah. so you know. Simba lit. Anyway, um, yeah. So always wanting to be the. So talks too much, too loud. Yeah, I mean a lot of qualities that I have too. <laughs> Maybe that's why. All right, let's <laughs> go to the next question. The let's worst. go to number three. What do you mean? It, it just takes too long. Favorite NFL team other than the Patriots? Um, I don't think I have one. I never really watched football before, you guys. So, well, another Honestly. reason that she never watched football. Yeah, supposedly. <laughs> Being a doctor, best part, worst part, and and also include the process of becoming a doctor. Okay, best part is the result of what you do, helping people, seeing the result of that. Um, especially, I was in New Brunswick, so we were like inner city. New Brunswick um, is in New Jersey by New Rutgers. Jersey, yeah. So we had some inner city um, patients, a lot of them. And seeing the results of that, that you can actually care for people who usually don't get, you know, proper care or people who even care about them mm. to give them that care. Worst part, um, the politics of medicine is terrible now. Terrible. Probably if I knew that before doing it, I probably would have changed my mind. But um, and, and just how long the journey is, a long time. So it's a lot of schooling, and you're studying all the time, and it never ends. Because when you finish, you still have to study for boards. <laughs> so players deal with retirement, and mm-hmm. what do you do after? How how have you felt? Do you miss doing that and being doc? Michelle um, retired. She's now full time mom to uh, Bebe's went kids into, upstairs. Uh, went to early retirement. Um, yeah. <laughs> do you miss it? Do you are you like the NFL players that can't watch doctor shows? Like some players can't watch NFL no. games. No, I love watching them. But um, I miss working with the people I worked with. I miss doing procedures because I was very procedure-oriented. And I miss some of the patients that end up, you know, that you end up taking a liking to. But I don't miss all the studying, and I don't miss the late hours and the 12-hour shifts and the forever, forever studying. So, no, I don't miss that part. It's give and take. Doctor, mom. Which mom, one? always. She's a mom. Moms for life. <laughs> anything, anything about Deb that you'd like to tell the viewers that they may not know? <sighs> that you may not know. Um, I would say he's awesome. He's he a is big awesome. teddy bear. Nah, he teddy cries bear. when he watches shows. He never cries. No. Um, what you see is what you get, man. Yeah, he What's is pretty transparent. I would How say. fun! It, comedian. She always hates on my humor. Self 
self-proclaimed laughs comedian. All, I don't get how you can be <laughs> with someone, laugh all the time, and then say they're not funny. I know, but I mean, that's like love blinding yeah, yeah, you sometimes, yeah, 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 you yeah, know? Yeah. Not everybody thinks you're funny. Winners and losers of the weekend. So Michelle probably hasn't seen any of the, <laughs> our winners or losers. I may, but I may have. We went with the loser of the weekend. We went with Big Baller brand. I mean, listen, you got a Big Baller brand, family-oriented. LeVar Ball started it for his three ball, ball sons. For his three sons. Yeah. His last name's Ball, so we know them all. <laughs> like, okay. He started awesome idea. I hated on it when it came out. $500 shoes wasn't with it, but mm. I actually saw it. If we'll pay $500 for some other brand, why not pay $500? I was... Then today, we see a clip from their Facebook show where LeVar... We got to edit that out, too. Like, if I'm... If, yeah, if we're don't doing let production, that, let's edit that LeVar, out. LeVar, Lonzo thinks about changing the name, and LeVar's telling him, nah, that's And like, he wants to think about changing the name because of what they've been through as a brand. LeVar's best friend was stealing yeah, money. Update. A bunch of just stuff. It just was bad God pub, bad things. second in charge. He was stealing money. It all blew mm. up. Yeah. They fired him, blah, blah, blah. So, Lonzo... The, the guy that the one, the one of the brothers who's actually in the NBA right now says, We might want to change the name. LaVar goes, so the guy, Lonzo, is Lonzo Ball. He said, mm -hmm. That's like me changing your name to Alfonso just because you're like damaged goods your first two years in the NFL. <laughs> in the NBA. In the NBA. This is father telling son, who but also think, is his top guy on the brand. I think those are one of the situations where it's just like, Family and business, great idea is rolling, and it hits a certain point where it's just like, all right, we need some outside counsel. No, we need to just <laughs> needs to stop. I need to go back to being son. You go back to being dad. If you want to continue your brand, cool. I'm gonna step away for it. I'm gonna go join Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, Puma, whoever it is, and you find the next athlete. Or but, I'm gonna continue my brand, and I just want you to be a father to me. Help me with advice because at this point, yeah. like you don't want it to turn out to like you can't even do business because I can't stand the man. Because think about it, if, when as you watch that clip, if you're Lonzo Ball, if he wasn't your father, would you allow somebody as you're talking about your own brand, your own business, to talk to you in that nature? As if your opinion to doesn't take a exist. Shot too. For sure, but you wouldn't allow it. What do you think about this? I'm a big believer in this. All PR is good PR. Uh, that's what they say, but I mean. So will I people be more interested that... in the brand maybe now to see them beef? Yeah, but that doesn't mean they're gonna buy it. If they you look might, long, they clicks might, don't exactly. They might clicks, clicks don't equate to yeah to money. Yeah. To uh, add to cart. Well, not so. to complete on the purchase. Too much. The winners <laughs> of the weekend. J Mac, you want to do the honor? Eddie George and Steve McNair get their jerseys retired um, in Nashville. Uh, Titans ended up losing that game, but huge honor. My eight years there, man, people rave about um, the Eddie Georges, the Steve McNairs, the Keith Bullocks, Javon Curses. Keith Bullock just, from Rockland County, just, same as us. Just that era Eight four of, five. of uh, Titans football. They ended up losing the Super Bowl that year, but just amazing guys that did great things on the field and in the community. Uh, as well. So what an honor uh, for those uh, two guys to get their jerseys retired. Um, not as much of an honor as to watch whatever they had going on at the game. Something was in flames. Like on I just saw it on social we media. We on fire. And as Up I, in here. As I watched it, my oldest daughter, she used to love to go to the games. And when we added the fire there, <laughs> she couldn't stand it. She The fire scared, scared her to death. And as I saw that Sunday, I'm like, well, that's why the fire scared her. She foreseen mm -hmm. that at she one point, this come. thing going to blow up. Yeah. But uh, extremely uh, excited and happy uh, for those two guys, man. They did have good seasons. They there. have front row. Man, before we get out of here, though, let's, let's log on to Twitter. Let's see some of the questions that some of the, uh, the listeners, what cars do you both drive to the stadium? We actually carpool. I ride with Dev to the stadium. He <laughs> rides with me to the stadium. Dad cars. Sometimes we take his Infinity. Sometimes we take my Audi. So if um, somebody wants to give us a free car, though, and like we'll come do a commercial, we're all for it. <laughs> yeah, all of that. Anyway. Um, what else we got? Just for fun, if you could alter the uniforms, helmet, appearance, what would you change? I wouldn't change anything, Ooh. but I would definitely rock the Silver. jerseys from the 90s, the blue on blue. I've, we've all mentioned it to Bill because it doesn't involve us changing our helmet. We should definitely pull them out. What about the blue red? On blue. That we ought to change our helmets. It's an yeah. NFL rule because we had the white helmets with that. Oh. Mm. She knew to this. We'll show her. I knew you had white. I didn't know there was a rule. How excited are you about the defense this season? 
How excited are you? Oh, y'all are balling right now. Oh, it's just right now? I don't, well, I mean, last year too, but this year is like, you know. We're talking about present tense. What's your favorite? Who's your favorite group on the defense? Secondary, the linebackers, or Secondary, of course. Okay. My eyes are always in the back. Oh, she knows what she's watching. I know. Oh, in the sky, I don't lie. Question, <laughs> how does a typical day at Gillette Stadium and the Patriots facility go? Does Bill have everything scheduled down to the minute? Not to the minute. What doesn't Bill have scheduled that J-Mac always complains I about? Got, they don't schedule meals. Like, training camp, <laughs> when, every, when any, any coach I've played for, there's always breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack at the bottom. Is there food there, though? There's food there. We eat. It's great. Um, the food is amazing. Probably the best food uh, teams I've been on since I've been in the league. But there's still no, Ted. like, you got to figure Shout out, like, oh, this thing is here. The next meeting, I got a 45-minute break. That must be the time I have to eat <laughs> because after that, there's not much time. But everything's not scheduled down to the minute. But, I mean, to about the half hour, just about. Um, but we come in. Um, we do a start the day where we're stretching and we're hydrating. Let's make it quick. Then a team meeting, then a special teams meeting, then offense and defensive meetings, then a little break to eat a Ooh. little bit, hot tubs, whatever you got to do to get ready for practice. You go out to practice for two, two and a half hours. You come back from practice. Lift. You got about 45 minutes to eat, lift, stretch, do whatever you need to do. Then you have more meetings where you go over to practice film. And after practice is done, most you people finish. haven't finished their lift, so you got to go back and finish your oh lift. Old guys like Devin, my Yourself, you get in hot tub, cold tub <laughs> treatment, and then you're home. You get in about 7.30, you're home about 6 o'clock, we'll say. There goes a day in life as a New England Patriot. So 12-hour shift. I used to do those. Does anyone in the locker room give a hard time to Matthew Slater about the video on the past two? That was the last question I've clicked because I thought it was awesome. About him. I if like, you have not had a chance. What do you do at the games? I like hot dogs. Go on the Patriots <laughs> Twitter account and find a little kid with glasses. And this show, it was for Matt Slater's birthday um, on September, I want to say, 9th or 10th. It's one of those days. Matt Slater, when he used to go watch his dad, Jackie Slater, he he's used like eight years dogs. old and he has the deepest voice of an eight-year-old. I like hot dogs. That's how he sounds. You got to go check it we out. We played it for him in the weight room, though. It's hilarious. We're all in there lifting. He has no idea. Then you just start hearing his voice come on. The speaker's in the weight room, so he got a kick out of that. Last question before we head out of here. Someone asked, who is mom's favorite twin? And we're going to allow Michelle to answer this question. You've been around our mom for the last almost decade. Mm -hmm. Who would you say is Mama Mac's favorite twin between me and Dev? Uh, I think she said it was Dev at one point. Ooh, but then kill it, him. Wait, wait, wait. But I think it switched. No, leave it. What's wait. wrong with you? That's Did you cut me off? <sighs> oh, I thought he cut Oof. off. Enjoy see your who, first and last see who, time. See who runs the house and who runs around it. <laughs> hey, before we get out of here, more than an athlete, but brought to you by Nationwide. Nationwide is on, on your side. side. Adam Thielen of the Minnesota Vikings is our. Uh, he was the NFLPA Community MVP. He came to uh, rescue for at-risk students, athletes at Brooklyn Center High School, starting uh, starting a fall education achievement program that rewards academic success with up to fifty thousand dollars in athletic resources. Oh, that's awesome! awesome Sh man. Shout out to Adam Thielen making a change mm. uh, in the community. community. Hundred yards every Sunday. I mean, you can't go wrong. Yeah, guys, a beast on the field and off the All field. All right, wrap man. this thing up. Reminder: man. the audio version of this you can find on iTunes. The video version, if you want to see our handsome handsome faces mama we made it go on youtube and all you have to do is look up double, double coverage, coverage with, with the, the mccordy twins. twins thank you again to our partners at boston medical center and embrace kids foundation be on the lookout tackle sickle cell casino night coming October up 28th at royale in boston be there gamble spend a lot of money let's raise a lot of money and awareness for the sickle cell disease big big thanks to ye for coming on she was a, she was very nervous you did a solid job ah, thank you thank you maybe you'll come back on again i'll think we'll about probably it. bring melissa on and, and grill her and then maybe bring you both on for the holidays or something oh, yeah there we go see ya